is, uh, this is uh, not the right thing to do. I'm going to do it anyway. By the way, the point that I was trying to make, which I realized when I sat back, was that when people saw thousands of students willing to take action on worker rights, that sent a really powerful message. Um, and I think really catalyzed it and galvanized it, catalyzed a lot of action, galvanized a lot of people. Your question, um, where the movement is at right now. I'm a trade union partisan. Um, I believe in the role of, of unions and a labor movement that's rooted in unions. I believe also very strongly in the work of other labor organizing. This is part of a, a larger movement for social and economic justice. And I guess if I were in charge of the movement, and no one is, um, but if I were in that place, um, we'd be um, really thinking about uh, not only new new ways uh, of organizing, which I think we've started to take up, but to change our aims away from, you know, uh, as you put it before, um, I, I'm going to butcher your words, um, considering the, the, the world that we want to live in a more affirmative vision and, and organizing around that, knowing that we're not going to win victories right away. We live in tremendously uh, frightening times in a lot of ways, and that the levers of state power are controlled by people who are pure reactionaries, and I don't think it's out of word to use the, out of line to use the F word and say, you know, some of them are borderline fascists. We're not going to be able to contest for state power in a way that can uh, do anything more than stop the worst of the attacks upon us. I think that's a great place to start. But we're in this position right now where we're moving from defensive fight back to something else. And I don't think many people have taken up the, the question of what the transition is, um, where what we're transitioning to, or in fact, how to do that. So I guess that would be the thing that I would really want to see more than anything is that um, the, the institutional players and the activists and folks from the grassroots on up in, in any way possible, take that question very seriously and not be doctrinaire um, or so ideological as to believe that their way is, is the only way, um, which I think you know we often do on the left, and I'm, I'm probably guilty of it as much as anyone else, but that we both need to have this, this um, broader vision, something that we're, we're searching for and kind of working towards over time, but that there have to be concrete steps on the way to get there. Um, and I think we could probably have a very interesting conversation here today about the role of electoralism elections um, and how that might have channeled um, uh, energy into something that um, wasn't the best way to take things. I think that's that's certainly a discussion worth having. But I also do think that um, the work of electoral politics is important. I think the work of grassroots organizing is important um, and, uh, and any number of different things. So um, I, I don't want to monopolize all the time on this. And I'll, I'll just say um, I think movements have many faces and there's no single strategy. There's no silver bullet. There's no killer app that's really going to um, figure this whole thing so that we should be comfortable with um, asking that question of, of what, in fact, we're, we're working towards, how we're going to do it, and understand that I don't have to do what you're going to do, and you don't have to do what you're going to do, um, but that we should have some coherence to us, because that's what the movement's on, just coherence. Yeah, um, I'll just say quickly, I mean, in my opinion, I'm not from Wisconsin, I'm not in Wisconsin, so I'll take my opinion. I also think that uh, electoral politics are
two seeds, right? Um, didn't <coughs> didn't take three seeds, which is what we needed to overturn the control of the state senate. Uh, so we so we won, but we didn't get to the goal, uh, which kind of means we lost. <laughs> um, but not really. Uh, so you know that that's kind of like you know the, the recall elections didn't really resolve anything. Um, uh, it was good effort, uh, I think, and some creative, uh, some creative uh, uh, groups came out of the recall effort, so that was worth it on that level too. Um, but more in general, on the level of electoral politics, what I have to say is, I do think we need to make commitments to electoral politics, but we haven't made them yet. What I mean is that uh, really making a commitment to electoral politics means as far as I know, none of the Democrats who ran uh, ran on a pledge of rolling back your, the, the, the Walker agenda. Okay, even with this movement behind them, they didn't come out and say that. They didn't come out and say, I am going to oppose everything this man does, which is what we want, right? Which is what is driving this movement, right? Is to stop this guy and to push him back. And none of the candidates said that, right? So we need to run our own candidates. And, and, and as a progressive left, as kind of like, you know, the, the, the activist grassroots, we haven't committed to electoral politics on that level yet. Because it says something different. Okay, there's, there's the whole thing of like, oh, well, your base is not gonna show up and your base is not gonna vote for you. Okay, that's a very different threat than a movement demonstrating that it can produce individuals who are willing put themselves out there and lo probably lose, but to put themselves out there and threaten another guy's seat who's from the same party. We haven't done that. Okay, when was the last time that's happened? It doesn't happen very often. Okay, so that's what we need to do in terms of commitment to electoral politics. Um, uh, what else is there to say here? I don't know. <laughs> First of all, for not just hundreds, not just thousands, but tens of thousands of people, um, <clears throat> they took action, collective action for the first time in their life, and um, collective action became culturated for a lot of folks where it hadn't been before. Um, and I think that's that's a really powerful thing because that's not something you shake off. You, you get a sense of your, your efficacy by, by taking action with other people. And I think anyone who was at the Capitol in Madison, and by the way, there's 72 counties around Wisconsin, and all 72 This is real, and it's a long-term thing. And the other component to that is, um, and I am a student of this, um, and this is the first time I can really think of where there has been an instantaneous fight back from working class, poor, middle-income folks all together at once around something um, that, that is, is shared on our stuff. That's a, that's a really incredible thing uh, that, you know, for the, for, for the first time in our, uh, I would say the, the entirety of the one-sided class war we've been fighting, certainly since the 1970s. There's been a real fight back, and that's really awesome. Uh, and everywhere I go and talk to people about this. By the way, I, I went to all the recall districts and spent serious time with, with activists on the ground there, um, just kind of sussing out what, where they're at, they're at. That is the thing that sticks with me I mean, more than anything, is that they see this as the, the first steps in something that's much, much more long term than what happened 